is that in the second series of uh, slides we will go through a basic principle of laparoscopic surgery. I am David Lomanto, I am director of Minimal Invasive Surgical Center at the University, uh, National University of Singapore and uh, also involved in the educational activity along this year and we will go through the basic principle on why we do need train surgeon, why we don't need to train doctors. I think the principle of, of training because we want to learn and we want to learn what are the challenge in any procedures. Can be endoscopy, can be medicine, can be cardiology, can be radiology. So learning process is something that involves our surgeon since we start to practice. And for laparoscopy surgery, what are the principle that we need to learn. I think the end-eye coordination is very important. Today, when we do laparoscopic surgery, we work on a 2D dimension because uh, we don't have the appreciation of the depth like we do have in open surgery. So we also need to learn ambidexterity. We are mostly, as a human being, and dominant hand. It can be either right more commonly or also left. In laparoscopic surgery, our best assistant is our non-dominant hand. So we need to learn that both hand, right and left, hand must the, the same power, the same control, and the same dexterity. Camera movement is very important. There are some tricks that we need to learn when we do laparoscopic surgery. It means when we do special maneuvers like a, like a dissection or like suture, we need to move, zoom in and out with the camera, or maybe have a lateral movement of the camera to appreciate to increase the the perception of depth. So that's very important. Learning some maneuver like dissection, like knocking, like suturing are challenging. Then this is required a lot of a learning process. There are two main challenges when we talk about laparoscopic surgery. The general challenge that are the one that are related to the technique. Any procedure we do, from cholecystectomy to appendectomy, colon resection or PCT surgery, the challenge in general is the same of the laparoscopic surgery, so the dexterity, the end-eye coordination. And then there are specific challenges that are related to the procedure. So the organs, the quadrant of the abdomen that we are working in, and so on. Let's go through the general challenge first. So as a surgeon, we are facing and working with the new technology. And this technology may vary day by day. Today we have monitors that can be standard definition or high definition. We have a camera system that go from the simple chip, single chip camera to the 3C, three chips camera to the 3D camera stereoscopic system today. Telescope that vary from the length, from the angle, from the movement from the flexibility or rigidity and light source they have different light source according to the which kind of bulb do we use and insufflator insufflator also vary depends on the gas but depends also the quantity of the gas we are going to insufflate and all we need to keep account that when we use technology when we are going to affect the homeostasis of the patient this may create complications so we need to be aware of the complication so saying so we need to know that we as a surgeon together with the, our partner in OT like the nurses we are in the interface between the technology and the patient so we need to be aware how the technology work what are the complications and how to handle technology in case of malfunction the specific challenge of laparoscopy surgery are the ones related to the narrow space. Most of the time we work in a space that is very small, like the preperitoneal space or the subfascial space or the chest itself in which the ribs and the space that uh, we use to insert the instrument that is goes through this I'll, uh, reduce the, the, the movement of our instrument. So the leverage from long instruments is also very important, like a fulcrum of uh, of the instrument that limit the movement. So important it is the position of the port, important the type of instrument that we are going to use, and also to understand what are the limitation in in the instrument that we use and also in the position and location of the instrument that we are going to use. So all these are very, very important 
and the challenge that we need to understand to handle not only simple case but especially when we move to more complex case odd matters so something that are related to laparoscopic surgery because involve technology involve uh, generic challenge like ambidexterity and the knowledge of instrument the technology is also the attitude that uh, each of us as a surgeon we have towards laparoscopy and technology sometimes we all know that retraining become uh, difficult with the age when we become older it's not simple to spend time in uh, in retraining ourselves to do more procedure, we become a bit lazy. And also because uh, when we start procedure, adopting new technology, the time that we take to perform the same procedure may be double or, or triple. And not everybody are keen to spend all the time that to do a procedure that usually can take one third or half of the time of the normal one. And costs are involved, especially in different socioeconomic areas, can be a very challenging situation, more than ambidexterity. And every day we have new technology. New technology that always come in the market. Not all are technology that are useful, but of course, that the usefulness of technology will only come after years of the adoption, after we have so called validated the use in a wider number of patients. What are the solutions to all this challenge? I think the most important to become a fast surgeon is to be patient, to train, to develop patient, to develop our own uh, uh, standard and our steps by spending time on training, by slowing down the, the, our movement, by breaking up the action, the surgical action in several steps. And most important, we have a choreography, not only with ourselves, but with all the team that are part of the surgical plan. And always, when we work on technology, have an alternative plan. As we puncture one tire, or we puncture two tires, the challenges are different, because we may need to call for help. And also in surgery, is the same. I have an alternative plan from calling a colleagues more expert or to change, for example, able to change a bulb before we convert because maybe the bulb bars that we cannot proceed with the surgery. So the solution are there for us and we need to be aware what are the solution to proceed. At the end of the bottom line, we always say that when the fa devices fail, we are the only our skill are able to salvage the situation. I was in a hotel in uh, Ho Chi Minh, I was facing the lake, I was looking at the skill of this man rowing with the feet, as uh, he was rowing with the hands. He was quite far, so I was really focused, and then, uh, then fastly I say, oh, this is a, a great show, or, or to show how skill can salvage the situation of uh, having not engine on the boat. So training is very important to become a competent and safe surgeon and remember that laparoscopic surgery is a teamwork so choreography is very important to work together with people that facing the same challenge. Anyway, we have a lot of resources that are other than this course are available in the market from manual, from books, from uh, e-training and for interactive CD-ROM that are available for everybody to become a competent and safe surgeon. So enjoy the course in the next series of slides.